The U.S. military began 2023 with a series of incidents in which fighter jets shot down UFOs. These events occurred not long after the congressional hearing on UFOs, at which the claim was made that the U.S. military hasn't ever fired at a UFO. Spoiler alert, that's not an accurate statement. Liar, liar, bent the fire. Is it UFO or UAP? The government's confusing me. The experts make it complicated. Lack of answers has me shaded. UFO, I don't know. UAP, yeah, I guess so. Searching for answers, where to begin? Round and round in circles again. Thunderstruck by mass confusion. Is it fact or fiction? Convolution. Hello, citizens, and welcome to UFO UAP WTF. I'm your host, Jason McClellan, and together we'll be exploring the fascinating, enigmatic, and frustrating subject of UFOs. In mid-2022, the first congressional hearing in more than 50 years on the subject of UFOs took place. During this hearing, led by the House Intelligence, Counterterrorism, Counterintelligence, and Counterproliferation Subcommittee, Deputy Director of Naval Intelligence Scott Bray was questioned by members of the subcommittee. Okay, so, um, and I, I assume we've never discharged any armaments against a UAP, correct? That's correct. Never discharged any armaments against a UFO, huh? I don't think that's quite correct. Let's jump in and explore this. As I just mentioned, the U.S. military shot down multiple UFOs at the beginning of 2023. The first object, which was eventually identified as a Chinese spy balloon, entered U.S. airspace over Alaska on January 28th, then drifted down across the United States. On February 2nd, an F-22 was dispatched out of Langley Air Force Base, and it took down the balloon with a single air-to-air missile off the coast of South Carolina. That was the beginning of a string of UFO shootdowns. A high-altitude object was shot down off the coast of Alaska on February 10th. Another UFO was shot down over Canadian airspace the following day. And another UFO was shot down over the Great Lakes region the day after that. That's a whole lot of shooting at UFOs for a military that just claimed several months earlier that it had never fired at a UFO. And these objects were likely just balloons of some sort. You're telling me that with all the crazy UFOs with seemingly advanced and superior capabilities that the U.S. military tells us its pilots encounter, a shot has never been fired at one of these things, yet a string of balloon UFO incidents transpires and it's missiles away? If you want to call bullshit on this one, I'm right there with you. Ever hear of the Battle of Los Angeles? This was a UFO incident that occurred on February 24th and 25th in 1942. The incident began on the evening of February 24th when a radar operator at Fort MacArthur reported seeing an unidentified object over Los Angeles. The object was tracked by radar for several hours before anti-aircraft batteries began firing at the UFO. The shooting continued for approximately an hour. Who knows if they hit whatever the object was, but in the end, the military had fired more than 1,400 rounds at the UFO. I think that qualifies as shooting at a UFO. The U.S. Air Force Academy has had some interesting UFO-related content in its textbooks over the years. A textbook they used from 1968 to 1970, titled Introductory Space Science Volume 2, focuses on unidentified flying objects in its 33rd chapter. Here's a nice line that's fitting for our discussion today. Quote, We too have fired on UFOs. End quote. Interesting. It continues, quote, About 10 o'clock one morning, a radar site near a fighter base picked up a UFO doing 700 miles per hour. The UFO then slowed to 100 miles per hour, and two F-86s were scrambled to intercept. Eventually, one F-86 closed on the UFO at about 3,000 feet altitude. 
The UFO began to accelerate away, but the pilot still managed to get within 500 yards of the target for a short period of time. It was definitely saucer-shaped. As the pilot pushed the F-86 at top speed, the UFO began to pull away. When the range reached 1,000 yards, the pilot armed his guns and fired in an attempt to down the saucer. He failed, and the UFO pulled away rapidly, vanishing in the distance." End quote. That seems like a pretty clear case of the U.S. military firing at UFOs. I do need to point out, though, that this textbook chapter doesn't really cite sources for its claims, and when it does, it's essentially sourced from a UFO book. UFO researcher Jacques Vallée is mentioned a couple times. I just point that out for your consideration. We hear time and time again how the government seemingly relies on UFO researchers and UFO literature to inform them about the UFO subject, suggesting that the government doesn't really know all that much about UFOs, and what they do know comes from UFO folks. Anyway, back to our exploration of shooting at UFOs. Let's look at some old newspapers. A piece in the June 13, 1975 edition of Greater Oregon claims, quote, Both friendly and hostile UFOs seem to be involved. Over six dozen cases of UFOs being fired upon have been reported to date, and 160 different cases of eyewitnesses being burned, blinded, paralyzed, and injured by UFOs in close encounters have been documented, end quote. The paper unfortunately doesn't cite any sources for these claims. The October 12, 1980 edition of the Sacramento Bee includes a quote from Dr. J. Allen Hynek, who served as a scientific consultant to the United States Air Force's official UFO studies. He stated, quote, One could think this was all a mental experience, except for the physical evidence, such as one reported incident when a UFO observer fired a shotgun at the object and then saw and heard the bullet ricochet off the UFO's side, end quote. Not the military there, but still a case of shooting at UFOs. Interesting. A story published in the November 28, 1978 edition of the Daily Sentinel Tribune, titled UFOs Fired On, tells the story of a UFO encounter with police in Guadalajara, Mexico. It states, quote, Two objects described as luminous flying saucers were reported by residents and a police officer near Guadalajara, authorities said Monday. Authorities said one of the unidentified flying objects hovered about 30 feet over the patrol car of policeman Francisco Diaz Cortez and emitted a red light, turned on the car's siren, and made it spin around. The policeman said the UFO then descended rapidly behind some nearby hills, and when he gave chase, he found another flying object. The police said they fired on the UFOs, both of which took off after rapidly emitting red light. Neither apparently was hit by the shots. Again, not military, but another example of shooting at UFOs. A UFO emitting a red light. We definitely have to go on a brief detour here. UFO scenes shooting red lights are reported in many UFO cases throughout history, and notably around the same time frame as well. A series of UFO attacks occurred on the Brazilian island of Colares in 1977, a case that was investigated for months by the Brazilian military. UFOs were seen shooting red beams of light at people, which resulted in burned skin, paralysis, and other health issues. Another quick example is the Rendlesham Forest incident. This was a multi-day incident that took place in 1980 near twin NATO bases RAF Woodbridge and RAF Bentwaters that were leased to the United States Air Force at the time. Witnesses reportedly saw red lights in the forest, multiple UFOs in the sky, and light beams shooting down to the ground both at Woodbridge's weapon storage area and at the personnel investigating the incident. Okay, off the tangent and back on track. Let's talk about Oscar Santa Maria Huerta. This is a pilot from the Peruvian Air Force who retired at the rank of colonel. In April of 1980, the then lieutenant was scrambled to intercept a strange shiny object that was spotted floating near the runway of La Jolla Air Force Base. This object was just hanging in the air approximately 2,000 feet off the ground. This balloon-like object was in restricted airspace, so the lieutenant moved to take it down. He fired 64 30mm shells, but shockingly, this had no effect on the object. He said it was like the UFO just absorbed the rounds. The UFO then shot away, and the lieutenant gave chase. The UFO came to an abrupt stop, and Oscar Santa Maria Huerta moved in for another shot, but the object zoomed upward before he could get the shot off. 
He tried a couple more times, but the result was the same. He attempted to position himself above the UFO to prevent it from ascending like it did before, but the UFO climbed to approximately 62,000 feet, much higher than his jet was rated for. His plane was low on fuel, so before returning to base, he decided to fly close to the object to get a better look. He described the object as roughly 32 feet in diameter with a shiny dome on top. A, quote, light bulb cut in half is how he described it. Back on the ground, he and others on the base watched the UFO as it hung in the sky for another two hours. I don't think that object was ever identified. In addition to existing accounts of shooting at UFOs, there are perhaps more stories where an attempt has been made to shoot at a UFO, but the attempt was seemingly thwarted by the UFO. Milton Torres is a great example of this. Milton Torres was a U.S. Air Force fighter pilot stationed at RAF Manston in Kent, England. In May of 1957, he was scrambled to intercept a massive UFO, reportedly the size of an aircraft carrier. This UFO was motionless in the sky at times, but also reached speeds of more than 7,600 miles per hour. Just as Torres got ready to fire 24 rockets at the UFO, it suddenly accelerated and disappeared from sight. Torres said he was given the order to shoot the UFO down before he even took off that day. He also says that he was debriefed by a men in black type guy. He actually describes him as looking like an IBM salesman. But this individual apparently threatened Torres and told him to never talk about the incident. Pretty fascinating case. And details about it were released by the Ministry of Defense in 2008. In 2004, the crew of an Iranian Air Force F-14 armed with missiles spotted a luminous object flying near a heavy water plant. When the jet's radar painted the object, both the radar intercept officer and the pilot saw the radar scope was disrupted. The pilot described the object as being spherical, with something like a green afterburner creating a considerable amount of turbulence behind it. Lock-on was achieved when the UFO was flying in a linear and constant flight path. Once the pilot selected a missile to launch against the UFO, the object increased its speed and disappeared like a meteor. A 2012 incident also involving Iranian Air Force F-14s is even crazier. An F-14 was scrambled to intercept an incoming UFO, but seconds after taking off, the F-14 reportedly exploded. Here's another example from 1967. The alleged incident, as it was reported to UFO researchers, involved the 6,947th Security Squadron, a unit of the U.S. Air Force Security Service that was tasked with monitoring Cuban Air Force communications and radar transmissions. In March of 1967, communication was intercepted from Cuban Air Defense radar controllers who were reporting a UFO approaching Cuba from the northeast. The UFO reportedly entered Cuban airspace at an altitude of approximately 33,000 feet, then shot away at approximately 660 miles per hour. In response to this UFO, two MiG-21 fighter jets were scrambled to intercept. The flight leader was ordered to arm weapons and destroy the UFO. The pilot achieved radar lock and was about to fire when his wingman alerted ground control that the flight leader's jet had exploded but apparently exploded wasn't the right description because there wasn't any smoke or flames. The wingman said the plane just disintegrated. After that, the UFO climbed to 98,000 feet and disappeared toward South America. That's an absolutely wild story, right? But being the wet blanket I am, I do have to add this disclaimer that, as with many of these stories, take it with a grain of salt. The source for this particular story is a little questionable, and the story gets even wilder with claims of visits from men in black, threats against UFO researchers, etc. It's got a bit of everything you'd expect from a sensational UFO story. The bottom line is this. Yes, the United States military has fired at UFOs. Other countries have too. And the recent balloon takedowns aside, the statement by Deputy Director of Naval Intelligence Scott Bray was inaccurate and misinformed. And that shouldn't really be surprising to anybody. I know it's not a popular opinion in UFO circles, but the U.S. government demonstrates time and time again that it doesn't really know all that much about UFOs. 
Each time the U.S. government decides to explore UFOs, they seemingly start from scratch, assigning people with no knowledge about UFO issues or even the government's own UFO history. It's a frustrating cycle that provides confusion, fuels conspiracies, and keeps people clamoring for UFO disclosure. But that, my friends, is our brief look at some of the times that UFOs have reportedly been shot at. I hope you learned something. I'm glad we could walk through that together. And hey, if there's a case or topic you'd like to have featured or addressed on a future episode, a general comment, or anything else, I'd love to hear it. I'm easy to reach. You can always contact me on Twitter at Acentric or shoot me an email at jason at rogueplanet.tv. I'm Jason McClellan. Thanks for hanging out today. Join me again next time as we try to figure out together what the f*** is up with these UFOs. UFOs!